So earlier today, we learned that Rebirth Island is indeed coming with season three at launch of Modern Warfare 3. But as it stands right now, that's like all there really is to say on that topic. We'll see a trailer coming tomorrow and likely a full reveal of season three for Warzone and Modern Warfare 3 upcoming on Wednesday. But again, that's all there is for now. But in the meantime, I wanted to discuss something that's kind of crazy about Call of Duty right now, because it's kind of hard to believe, but it's true. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of this report here? Does it sound wild to you despite, again, it being true? Drop a like if you enjoy and subscribe for more upcoming content for not only Modern Warfare 3 Season 3, but also more retrospective content like this and other titles upcoming. So for now, let's jump into probably one of the weirder things that you'll see in COD in recent times. But a few days ago, we started to get reports from compiling entities like Circana and other agencies that put together lists of how things like playtimes and sales figures go for each month. It's always the case that COD, despite what we all say, is always in the conversation of one of the top five most selling and most played games with the most recent title for this reference of Modern Warfare 3 and the COD HQ, which encompasses the existing Modern Warfare 3 and the Warzone experience as a whole. Those both sitting next to the top spots for this kind of stuff. The most recent data that was given, PlayStation reported player engagement for the COD HQ, Warzone, and Modern Warfare 3 at second on the platform in the month of February, only behind Fortnite, and the same was reported for Xbox platforms as well. But while it checks out that the most recent COD game would be a top of sales and player data for the month of February, the weird part of that report is that in the same reported month of February on Xbox, well, Black Ops 3 is at number 10. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Black Ops 3, you know, the game that came out in 2015, almost a decade ago, and Actually, that kind of hurts to say it's been that long, like doesn't feel right at all. Are, are we old now? But anyways, Black Ops 3 broke the top 10 for Xbox sales in the month of February. People buying the game digitally and it sits in the top 20 for PlayStation. It's not as high on PC, which is a bit surprising to me, given that you had the customs community for zombies there and other stuff, albeit way smaller than it used to be. But with near limitless potential on what could be in Black Ops 3 on PC, it's a bit surprising that it's not a little higher considering the other two are going up in rankings. But isn't that wild to consider? There's been no sale. There's nothing that really indicates why there'd be an influx in Black Ops 3 in sales, but there we are. But to be honest, is it surprising that Black Ops 3 is thriving and loved? Personally, I don't think so. Amid the jetpack era, I definitely think that Black Ops 3 was the best received by a long shot. Though I do think personally, Infinite Warfare actually ironed out and polished off the jetpack and thruster movement a bit more, that if it didn't come with that space theme, it'd probably be received way better. But that's a whole different topic. But Black Ops 3 did so much cool stuff, man. I mean, besides the abhorrent supply drop system of every single piece of loot in a singular loot pool with thousands of items included in them, including weapons amidst things like emblems and other trivial garbage, there was a lot of cool stuff that Black Ops 3 did, I thought. Campaign was eh, but multiplayer was fast, snappy, always kept you in the action. It's probably one of the last games that I consider having like iconic maps in that from the launch offering from the franchise to date. The camos were legendary, man. I mean, that was the OG Dark Matter grind here, something that changed the sort of face of how camo grinding worked for the rest of the franchise going forward. You had insane camos post launch and some were event camos to follow. I genuinely think that Into the Void is still one of my personal favorite camos ever introduced into the COD franchise. That's just me. Again, feel free to disagree. That's entirely fine. But you also had awesome weaponry. To this day, I still love the feeling of the ICR-1, the Man of War, the KN-44, the M8A7, the VMP, the Razorback. All such classics, man. Specialists were hit or miss for people, but at the time they were interesting. I personally didn't mind them. I wasn't really burnt out at that point like I would be in Black Ops 4 after seeing them again in two prior games with Infinite Warfare to follow the year after Black Ops 3 and then again Black Ops 4. And I still think Black Ops 4 did specialists way worse than what they did in Black Ops 3. You had both an ability and a sort of ultimate with that. You didn't pick or choose like you did in Black Ops 3. But I'll be honest with you, man. Manning Outrider for that vision pulse for that combat focus of Seraph came in clutch for things like pub stomping back back in the day, back when you still could, when there was no skill-based matchmaking. You had a classic prestige system with the introduction of level 1000 to grind once you reached prestige master. Depending on who you asked, you had actual map packs, which may have been good or bad, not live seasons. So again, depending on if you wanted to pay for those maps or if you wanted to see the player base split it all for those that did or did not have it, Again, that's kind of up in the air, but I mean, you had a lot of stuff on the multiplayer side that is incredibly memorable to say the least. 
but then we cannot forget zombies. The base offering is arguably one of the best, at least in the competitive discussion about what game has the best zombies offering. The Rise and Drac was an interesting classic. Shadows of Evil grew on people big time. As with the Gobblegum system that it introduced, you had Revelations, one that I know it's not everybody's favorite, but honestly, I absolutely love that map for some reason. I think it had something to do with the colors of it. I'm a big color theory guy, so as dumb and nerdy as that is, seeing all those different themes is pretty cool put into one map. Also loved the Pack-a-Punch camos out of that. But then I think the coup de grace that no one can deny was just perhaps the most incredible thing for Zombies fans was Zombies Chronicles. That elusive DLC 5 that after years and years and years of rumors, it finally happened, bringing with it the classics of Noct, Verruckt, Shinonuma, Kino, Ascension, Shangri-La, Moon, and Origins. It was all the heavy hitters of the past, remastered and introduced with current tech, better graphics, and even interwoven new Easter eggs tying the Shadow Man into the storyline of Black Ops 3 and into all of those classic ones. I remember that was so much fun to discover those little details, but it's just, it's insanely weird, but I get it because Black Ops 3 was great. Good games are going to stand the test of time and maybe have a resurgence here and there. If I'm honest with you, I think this probably has a lot to do with zombies. I feel like if you're like looking at who's buying this now, I'd say the majority might be zombies fans just off of educated guess. That makes the most sense to me. I mean, you have the largest offering of zombies content in a singular COD game, but with the classic mechanics, the classic feeling, it's upgraded enough that you can play those old school and classic maps still on something that can run higher resolution, I think upwards of 4K natively on some of those platforms, but by comparison to the classics, way better than what you had on like an Xbox 360. It's something you can still play backwards compatible if you have the game and you have an Xbox Series X or S or PlayStation 5, or if you're still on PS4 or Xbox One. It just makes a lot of sense in that case to me. But that all makes me wonder, Activision and Microsoft have to see this now, right? Like, certainly that's going to ring some bells here. And I think that they have the potential to do this again for the upcoming year. That There's no information to point to this otherwise beyond just this would be perfect in a dream scenario. But like, we've heard discussion of a Zombies Chronicle 2 for years now since Black Ops 4 and even before, honestly, since the launch of Chronicles, people theorized we'd get another one because there were so many maps that we didn't see remastered in that case. So it was rumored to happen for Black Ops 4, it was rumored to happen for Cold War, but neither happened. But it wouldn't surprise me because would it be not just perfect that we see Zombies Chronicles 2 as a part of year two of Black Ops Gulf War and that sort of Black Ops 2 air quote remaster comparable to what Modern Warfare 3 did. Like what a perfect way to sell people on your second year of content and an expansion than you know, including the literal game expansion that held records for almost a decade. I think it was only just recently broken, but for years, Chronicles was the most purchased PlayStation expansion ever. So like, that would make so much sense, I think. And honestly, it would give you so much more value in regards to buying a second year and a second game compared to, no offense, Modern Warfare Zombies. I think that, again, it had a lot of potential, I think, for a Frankenstein mode that was thrown together in probably a few months' time. It was pretty cool, but, like, Zombies Chronicles 2 with, like, 8 to 10 maps for zombies or DMZ reskin for zombies. I think one is a very clear choice on which I'd pay for as a base offering to include in a sort of year two expansion that's supposed to be a new game. So like, clearly the interest is there, I would say, for people going back and playing a game that's nearly 10 years old now at this point. Okay, probably more like nine, but you get what I'm saying. It is something that this has stood the test of time and is making a resurgence right now, which is just crazy to consider, given that you have free-to-play Warzone, you have a new multiplayer experience that is catering to a lot of what people wanted out of last year, and then other offerings on top of that, Warzone Mobile, COD Mobile, but Black Ops 3 is still there in the conversation and doing very well for sales in a current it's not like it's went free to play or anything it's not like it went on game pass or anything it people are buying this in 2024 which is so cool to the testament of how good a game it was and how much there was on offer that people still are looking for so that said do you think this is any indication that maybe we'll see this happen as a year two of black ops golf war that maybe zombies chronicles 2 is around the corner who knows? But I mean, for right now, if you have Black Ops 3, there's a resurgence going on. So if you want to check it out, you might be able to find some games. But anyways, that's where we're going to wrap it up. It was just something that has been on my mind for the last couple of days is kind of crazy. And I just want to share with you guys if you hadn't heard that because 
Maybe you'll find it crazy too. But anyways, drop your thoughts down below. More coverage resumes for tomorrow with Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone Rebirth Islands trailer coming and probably some other stuff to follow here in the next couple of days. Getting back on the COD train here for the build up for season three and a little beyond. Then we'll get back into some more variety stuff again. But for now, that's what we're gonna call it. So let your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe for more Call of Duty content, more retrospective content like this, but also a ton of other FPS content as well. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.